Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In our last video in this series, we began discussing some of the many health benefits of fasting. We'll continue in this video with a condition that causes more death and disability than any other in industrialized countries. This condition is one of the leading reasons for doctor visits, as well as the prescribing of medications. It affects most Americans over the age of 65 and typically has no symptoms, sometimes called the silent killer. I'm referring, of course, to high blood pressure, also known as hypertension, which can lead to heart attack or stroke. It's estimated that one third of adults in the United States suffer from high blood pressure. This is typically treated with medication. But what if there was a way to lower blood pressure and keep it down without the need for drugs? Well, luckily for us, there is. Let's begin by defining what blood pressure is and how it's measured. Blood pressure is exactly what it sounds like, the pressure in your blood vessels. With a normal amount of blood, a healthy heart, and healthy elastic blood vessels, you'll experience a normal blood pressure. Low blood pressure can make you feel dizzy, especially right when you stand up from having been seated. This is usually harmless and can be the result of dehydration or salt deficiency. Mildly or moderately elevated blood pressure will rarely give obvious symptoms, perhaps a slight headache. A very high blood pressure can give severe headaches, fatigue, and nausea. High blood pressure is the result of an increased amount of liquid and salt in the blood, and also of the blood vessel walls being thicker and harder than normal. As high blood pressure often goes unnoticed, it's common for people to live with it for some time without knowing. As it's a risk factor, it may be wise to check your blood pressure every few years, even if you're generally feeling healthy. Blood pressure is usually measured by wrapping an inflatable cuff called a sphygmomanometer around your upper arm and pumping it up. The amount of pressure in the cuff, which stops the blood flow to your arm, is then measured. And this is equal to the pressure in your blood vessels. Blood pressure is recorded as two numbers, one above the other. The top number is the peak pressure, systolic blood pressure, and represents the pressure of the blood in the vessels when the heart is contracted. The bottom number is the minimum pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and represents the pressure of the blood in the vessels when the heart is at rest. Both measurements are important and can indicate your risk of morbidity or mortality. That is to say, your risk of becoming ill or dying. The pressure is measured using the terminology millimeters of mercury. But when we refer to the measurement, we typically drop this, 120 over 80 rather than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. An ideal healthy blood pressure is not higher than 120 over 80. Most people in the Western world, however, have a blood pressure higher than this. An elevated blood pressure is common in middle-aged and older individuals, especially in those who are overweight. As blood pressure tends to vary somewhat from day to day, as well as within the day, one is typically only diagnosed with high blood pressure if they've given a repeatedly high reading. Also, if the average of either of the readings, meaning either the systolic or diastolic, is higher than the norm, it will be considered an elevated blood pressure. That is, an average of 150 over 85 or 135 over 100 given on several occasions will be considered too high. Values between 140 over 90 and 160 over 100 are also considered as slightly elevated blood pressure. Above 160 over 100 is said to be moderately elevated, and above 180 over 110 is severely elevated blood pressure. Additionally, the calculated difference between the systolic and diastolic pressures is also of interest. If the difference is large, for example 170 over 85, it could be a sign of stiff arteries, which is often caused by heart disease and means that the blood vessels can't dilate enough when the heart sends out a pulse, which forces the blood pressure to increase. Said another way, the walls are unable to expand, so the pressure rises when the heart tries to pump the blood through. 
Blood pressure is important because if it's elevated, there's increased wear and stress on the blood vessels. The increased turbulence that's created in the bloodstream then leads to the creation of fatty sores in the vessels known as plaque. This process is known as atherosclerosis. When these plaques rupture, they form blood clots and can cause blockages in the vessels, inhibiting blood flow to the brain or heart. This in turn leads to heart attack or stroke. In fact, for every point that your systolic blood pressure rises over 90, there is a 1% increase in mortality risk. That is to say that if your systolic blood pressure is 150, then your risk of hypertensive-related death is increased by 60%. However, a more positive way to look at this is if you can lower your blood pressure from 150 to 110, well then you've reduced your risk of mortality by 40%. The interesting aspect of this is that most heart attacks and strokes resulting from hypertension occur in individuals who do not have blood pressure elevated enough to warrant medications. This is due to the fact that all blood pressure medications have side effects and risks associated with them. And so severe are these side effects that until systolic blood pressure is significantly elevated, 160 or higher for most patients, the risks of the medications outweigh their benefit. So returning to our previous statements, this means that before you are considered at risk enough for medication, you have a 70% increased risk of hypertensive death. Now many people find that their blood pressure increases because of subconscious stress especially when in medical offices or hospitals. This is usually called white coat hypertension. That is, elevated blood pressure levels from just seeing the white lab coats that doctors wear. It's a common problem as 10 to 15% of people are diagnosed with high blood pressure after measurements were taken at a medical facility, only to find later that measurements taken at home or averaged over 24 hours were normal. People with white coat hypertension do not need blood pressure lowering medication, but they often get it anyway. So if you suspect a stress-related elevation in your blood pressure, you can borrow blood pressure meters from your medical facility, strap them on for 24 hours to register blood pressure several times per hour. Or you could buy a blood pressure meter to check yourself several times at home. There are several rare causes of high blood pressure, such as kidney or adrenal disorders. If there's reason to suspect such disorders are the cause of your hypertension, you should speak with your doctor about treatment. However, the most common type of elevated blood pressure is the kind that doesn't have a clear cause. This is known as primary hypertension. So what could cause this elevated blood pressure? Well, often it's what's called metabolic syndrome, also known as disease of the Western world. People with elevated blood pressure often carry extra weight around their belly, visceral fat. And they're also likely to be in the risk zone for high blood sugar and type 2 diabetes. Raised insulin levels lead to the accumulation of fluid and salt in the body. This in turn increases blood pressure. In addition, high levels of insulin can thicken the tissue around blood vessels, known as smooth muscle, which also may contribute to an elevated blood pressure. As we've seen from previous videos, refined carbohydrates raise insulin levels more than any other type of food. And since most carbs in the Western Hemisphere are refined, well, that's where we end up with our disease of the Western world. Since we know that salt retention results in elevated blood pressure, it sounds plausible that ingested salt or sodium would add to this increase. This, however, may not be the case, as some research has shown that lower salt intake only lowers blood pressure by an average of one millimeter of mercury. Additionally, there isn't much evidence that reducing salt in our food will result in less risk of CVD. A 2011 study confirmed just that. So does lowering salt intake reduce our risk? Well, nobody really knows. Other possible causes of hypertension include NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen or naproxen, cortisone pills, such as prednisone, birth control pills, caffeinated coffee, large amounts of alcohol, and smoking, as well as other forms of nicotine.
So now that we know the causes, we can try at the very least to try to avoid certain things in order to keep our blood pressure from becoming elevated. As we've stated several times before, avoiding highly processed food, such as fast food, will help greatly. Aside from all the refined carbs, fast food is packed with salt. So avoiding it could have numerous health benefits. Obviously, large quantities of caffeine can cause issues as well, so perhaps reduce how much coffee you drink or switch to half-calf or decaf. And drinking alcohol in moderation as well as quitting smoking are excellent ideas. So, those are preventive measures and can help to prevent your blood pressure from becoming elevated. But what methods are there for treating blood pressure naturally without medication? Well, in a study conducted in 2001 and published in the Journal of Manipulative and Physiological Therapeutics, the use of water-only fasting demonstrated the largest effect on lowering blood pressure of any study in the scientific literature. The average drop in systolic blood pressure in 174 consecutive patients was 37 points. In those patients with higher levels of blood pressure, starting at what is called stage three hypertension, where the systolic blood pressure exceeds 180 points, the average reduction was 60 points. In a second study, published in 2002 in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, a group of 68 patients with borderline high blood pressure, that is, systolic pressure between 120 and 140, underwent a period of water-only fasting for an average of two weeks. The average reduction in blood pressure exceeded 20 points, resulting in a final average blood pressure of 96 over 67. This is a level similar to what is suspected to be optimum blood pressure. In 2001, California's largest labor union, the IUOE, elected to make fasting a fully covered medical benefit offered to all active and retired members and their families that suffered with high blood pressure or diabetes. This was the first time in history that a major medical payer had agreed to provide water only or absolute fasting as a fully covered medical benefit. Clearly, fasting is the answer once more. If all you have to do is stop eating for extended periods of time, and this will lower your blood pressure as effectively as medication, and it's so powerful that some companies will cover it medically, then why not try it? And then, once you've lowered your blood pressure, what's the best method for keeping it down? Well, we've already determined that elevated insulin is a main cause of high blood pressure. And we know that reducing how many refined carbs we eat will have the greatest effect on this insulin production. So, eating a low carbohydrate, high fat diet will garner the best results. Many studies have shown that low carb diets result in improved blood pressure and lead to better improvements than other diets. A 2010 study of a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet versus a low fat diet with the medication Orlistat which is a common weight loss medication, took 124 overweight or obese patients and broke them into two groups. The low carb group ate less than 20 grams of carbs per day, while the low fat group took 120 milligrams of Orlistat three times daily and had less than 30% of their diet come from fat. Additionally, they ate 500 to 1000 calories per day less. The study lasted 48 weeks and weight, blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugars were tracked. At the end of the study, the low carb group lost more weight, 9.5% of original weight versus 8.5% in the low fat group. Both groups had similar impact on cholesterol. Only the low carb group had improvements in blood glucose, blood insulin, and HbA1c levels. This was not seen in the low fat group. And as is relevant to this video, the low carb group had significantly better improvement in blood pressure, an average improvement of 5.9 over 4.5 versus only 1.5 over 0.4 for the low fat group. So LCHF was as powerful for controlling blood pressure as the medically recommended low fat diet and a mainstream weight loss drug, not to mention all its other benefits.
So let's sum up here. Fasting is the most powerful natural method for lowering blood pressure and combined with a low carb, high fat diet is as effective at lowering and maintaining low blood pressure as any medication that one can take. It has no side effects and has the added benefit of weight loss, lowered blood sugar, and lowered cholesterol. So if you're dealing with hypertension or suspect that your blood pressure is elevated, well, then what do you have to lose by trying fasting? And before we close, I would like to remind you that if you do decide to try fasting as a treatment for hypertension, be sure to track your blood pressure several times per day at home, as well as with your physician, especially if you are taking blood pressure medications. Fasting is so powerful at lowering blood pressure that if not monitored closely, it can actually result in blood pressure falling too low or hypotension, especially when on medication. Okay, disclaimer ended. Now feel free to go and fast. <laughs> and that will be it for this one. We have many more videos to come in this series as well as our other series. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get them. Also, remember to click the bell to enable alerts so you know when new videos post. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be A Loser Today. And you can find all of our videos as well as recipes and links on our website, BeALoser.Today. If you like this video or any of our videos, we'd appreciate if you would click the like button and help us gain a little bit more exposure. As always, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep being a loser.